You know, originally, I wasn't even going to respond to this video properly, but given it's amassed quite a considerable view count and it's being posted as a response anytime someone mentions my video, I think it's about time I say something. I never intended to even make a video on this because honestly, I feel kind of bad. In the past, when people have responded to my work in this way, they usually make at least one good point that I have to take on the shoulder. But this video just makes no good points at all. Like, I genuinely question the cognitive abilities of the people that watched this video and thought it was good or said anything valid. You may think I'm being unnecessarily mean here, but I'm just matching the energy of the creator. All right, so today we're going to be talking about John Swan's response to technicals and why it sucks. About a week ago, Smash commentator The Franchise dropped a response to my technicals video. From the very beginning, it's pretty clear that he's not even going to try and be charitable. He clearly does not like me and even insults you, the audience watching, which I thought was an interesting move. The average IQ of a John Swan fan is between 1 and 24. Like, I'm not going to sit here and cry about it, but I think it's important to bring it up because of something The Franchise discusses himself, that being good faith. There are many people in the commentary community that I can accept disagreement with because they are honest and argue in good faith. However, John is not one of those people. When I made my video on technicals, I established from the get-go that I'm not just some blind hater and that I do respect a lot of his other work. I did commissions for the guy for goodness sake, I wouldn't do that if I didn't like him. I gave him credit and cut him slack even in places where I didn't have to and I concluded the video with an appeal and a hope that he would do better. I made the intro for his fantastic video on the Sky House. I always considered his work to be one of the best. His videos were always incredibly engaging. He always seemed super level-headed and sensible. Look, I understand that slip-ups could potentially happen. I get it. He was younger back then and he may have not made the right call. I would be okay with him if he came out and admitted that he could have taken more action at the time. Tech. I don't hate you, man. I hope you'll change for the better. I think he's been extremely disingenuous, particularly since the video's release, but I did and will still make an attempt to be charitable where I reasonably can. However, the franchise throws this entire principle completely out the window and instead presents my arguments in the worst possible light. His entire video is regrettably filled with misrepresentation, misinformation, and a severe lack of self-awareness. He also does this weird thing where he plays clips that I already included in my video and implies that I cut context or didn't represent things correctly. Like he did this several times, he pulled up a clip that I had already used and said or implied that I misrepresented stuff. How on earth could I misrepresent something when I let the clip play out? <laughs> What he calls misrepresentation is actually just called having a different opinion, but we'll get into that a little bit later. John's whole argument hinges on broken evidence. Despite being so confident in his claim that Zero asked Katie for the images, he has nothing to back it up besides Katie's word and Zero's confession. <laughs> Come on, dude. Not even two minutes in. Guys, John has nothing to back this up besides a confession. <laughs> we got him, boys. And yes, he is actually going to be making all the arguments you think he is. Katie was unable to provide any screenshots that could substantiate her claims, so her testimony alone is not hard proof of anything. When judging allegations like this, I think it's important to look at how solid the two parties' stories really are. Besides the Ice Cube claim, Katie's story lines up perfectly with the screenshots she provides. And even in the screenshots, there are certain and definite implications that sexual conversations were happening. I love how you react so funny to things. Mad adorable. It's like when you rub a cat's belly and then they just roll around. You will not rub my belly. Yeah, why only do that? I promise I'll be normal. If every two weeks we could do something like that, or in that day, I could go all in. As long as you promise me that those days you are all mine. Her twit longer was handled with grace and the grooming in the messages is undeniable and completely gross. I have very little reason to doubt the rest of her story because everything else she provided backs up her claim. And her reason for not having screenshots of the Ice Cube incident makes a ton of sense when you look at the full picture. The screenshots I have were actually when I was so starstruck that what I thought was happening to me was special, so I kept them for posterity. I'm all for waiting to gather enough evidence before making a judgment, but everything she gave us, along with Zero's eventual confession, was more than enough for me. But apparently, 
not enough for the franchise. Technicals is claiming that Zero was not of sound mind when giving his confession, so it's entirely possible that he admitted to things that he hadn't done. This is corroborated by the fact that Zero also admitted guilt to another situation where he was innocent. Keep in mind that the Laura situation was not in contention until Zero brought it up in his confession. This is a part of the video where the franchise is so incredibly biased that his ability to logically reason just disappears. He sees the Twitlunga as a sabotage attempt and will not entertain any other perspective whatsoever. So let's do what he refuses to do and look at it another way. It is human nature to defend yourself on as many things as possible, even when you're backed into a corner. In the beginning of Zero's Twitlunga, he says that he wants people to stop defending him. And then he continues to defend himself in other sections. He's clearly trying to soften the blow as much as possible. So let's answer the franchise's question. He wasn't responding to an allegation when he wrote that bit, so why would he bring it up if he wasn't trying to sabotage himself as he claims? He actually doesn't admit guilt in the Laura situation. He's preemptively defending himself. Zero says that she never told him she was underage. Zero says she told him she was older. Zero says he apologized already. Zero says there were no graphic pictures. And Zero says she was from another country. None of this is an admission of guilt. The closest we have to this is where he says that it doesn't matter nor make it better, which really isn't substantial. To say that this constitutes an admission of guilt is just dishonest. Zero also admitted guilt to another situation where he was innocent. So why does Zero defend himself here? Because he's scared more people would try and come after him and ruin his already scarred reputation. When all these individuals are coming up with stories against him, there's a pretty good chance that Laura might do the same thing. Consequently, he jumps in before it happens so that his bases are covered. Remember, it's human nature to defend yourself on as many things as possible, even when you're backed into a corner. Why would he bring it up if he wasn't trying to sabotage himself as he claims? And why would he defend himself in nearly every other section within the same twit longer if he was trying to sabotage himself? Even if you look at this from the franchise's perspective, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Why not just go full nuclear, admit to the images, admit to the Laura stuff, and completely self-destruct? I can tell you why. It's because it wasn't a sabotage attempt. And I can even put forward a completely reasonable order of events to explain why he might have admitted to the Katie stuff. Many of you might not be aware of this, but Zero actually made a previous response to the allegations in a Google document, where he outright lies about the Katie drama. In this document, he states that he was completely unaware Katie was underage until she told him, and that obviously made him feel extreme regret, and he felt disgusted immediately. He also said that he didn't know she was underage prior to September the 23rd, in big bold letters by the way. But this was a complete and utter lie. And upon this statement going live, Katie was able to retrieve another screenshot of her conversations with Zero, where it shows he knew her age days before. She then sent this to Jisoo, who included it in her document. At this point, I can imagine he was probably pretty scared that some additional screenshots might be recovered, specifically in relation to the Ice Cube incident. He knows that if Katie manages to recover these incriminating chat messages somehow, it's game over for him. So he admits to what he has to. Even though it's human nature to defend yourself when backed into a corner, there is a point where it becomes outrageous and you just have to take the fall. And I believe that's what Zero did. If you want to believe Zero, you can do that. But I certainly don't. And I think it's perfectly 100% reasonable to doubt his claim that his confession was a sabotage attempt. Katie was unable to provide any screenshots that could substantiate her claims, so her testimony alone is not hard proof of anything. Okay, so why does the franchise judge Katie's testimony so harshly while just accepting that Zero's confession was a sabotage attempt because he said so? Is there any other evidence other than his testimony? We know that he did attempt suicide nine months later. The franchise put this in his video, but it's almost certain they're not connected. Why would you post a suicide letter nine months before your attempt? I'm not trying to be insensitive here, but there's no mention of suicidal thoughts in the twit longer at all. All we have is his testimony to back this up. So why do we trust his word, but not Katie's? Katie has 25 screenshots of her conversation with Zero, a comprehensive twit longer detailing everything that happened and everything she said lines up perfectly. 
Zero, on the other hand, has nothing more than a shoddy excuse and no evidence to back up his claim. Testimony alone is not hard proof of anything. See the double standard here? The franchise refuses to entertain any other perspective but his own, and it leads to these moments that are increasingly hard to ignore. And we're only three minutes into the video. I also want to point out that this confession was not the first statement he made about Katie. Uh, he actually made a statement before this where he also addressed Leffen's allegations, but as you can see here, it says, specifically, I want to start by taking ownership and apologize to Jisoo, Katie, and Leffen for my actions. Leffen and Jisoo's allegations were not true, but he's taking ownership for them and apologizing. Why am I supposed to take Zero's confession at face value when there's reason to discard it? And he also has a history of admitting to and apologizing for things that he didn't do. He takes this single paragraph and uses it to say that he apologized for everything in this document, which just isn't true. He contests multiple things within this document and does a lot of apologizing for hurting people's feelings instead of for the actions themselves. On top of all of this, he constantly makes excuses for himself, saying he was just a stupid teenager when these events occurred. He may have apologized for some stuff, but it doesn't seem particularly sincere, and to frame this as an unequivocal apology to everything and everyone is just demonstrably untrue. Oh, and by the way, what he just said about omitting 90% of the twit longer, well, even that is a half-truth, because while it is true that Tech did this, he actually shows screenshots of what those omitted parts are referring to anyways, so that point was ultimately irrelevant. Uh, come on, man, are you serious? The point is not irrelevant, because he leaves out the majority where Katie explains how she was affected by this, her thoughts at the time, and any extra insight that she can gain from the twit longer itself. It's completely invalidating her story by not representing it correctly. All we get to see is five of the 25 screenshots, completely out of context, flashing on the screen for a grand total of 14 seconds. You're telling me anyone is going to pause and read them? He's clearly glossing over all of this for a reason, don't give me that bullshit. The only reason he included them in there in the first place is to use the same rubbish excuse that you're giving me right now. I included the message, so you can't tell me I'm leaving them out. Bullshit. He knows no one is going to pause and read them, because if he did read them, everyone would know how utterly repulsive Zero truly is. You will not rub my belly. Yeah. Why only do that? <gasps> mm hmm Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotta give him props. I feel like I want to vomit, which means he did a good job. Hmm. I'm honored. You're adorable. Oh, this is so manipulative, man. Oh my god, man. This is so dumb to admit, because I've seen these DMs before, but it hits a lot harder when it's read like this. Like, I have two younger sisters. This girl is the same age as my, not my youngest sister, but my younger sister. If Zero was talking to her, I would fucking be furious, bro. The context is important, and the length of time they were talking is important. I mean, this guy was setting up a fucking plan that every two weeks he would go fucking, like, super horny over I'm gonna do more together. than rub your belly, you baby 14-year-old. You're such a pervert, you want it. Like, that's not just saying she's adorable one yeah. or two times. He's doing this on his off days. Imagine what he did on the, like, designated horny day. You'll grow out of it eventually. You'll grow out of it eventually. You'll grow out of it eventually. You can extract the Ice Cube incident from this and still walk away thinking this guy is a total fucking degen. The Ice Cube story, it's just, it makes it a million times worse, but even without it, if you want to just forego that story completely, it's still really fucking bad. That was an incredible job. I, I, please explain that to me, Texas. <clears throat> Meanwhile, John is literally taking information that isn't verifiably true and pushing it as indisputable fact while I'm supposed to sit here and call technicals the dishonest one building a narrative. Just to remind you, when he was 19, Zero groomed a 14-year-old girl for months and pressured her to send him pictures of her performing sex acts. Yeah, dude, he just kind of tripped and fell and groomed a minor for like three months and asked her to shove ice up her pussy. And saying that no images were exchanged is just poisoning the well. He asked for them. It doesn't matter if the girl sent them or not. The intent was still there. Zero never exchanged images with Katie, which is his worst perceived crime to this day. He asked for them. Doesn't matter if he didn't receive any. The intent was still there. How many times do I have to go over this? We don't know whether or not Zero asked Katie for the pictures, but you present it in your video as if it was proven true. If that isn't dishonest, then I don't know what is. Mate. Zero confessed to it. I'm presenting it as fact because as far as I'm concerned, these are the facts. 
He confessed to the Ice Cube incident. That is a fact. It is completely non-negotiable. The validity of it is what you're calling into question. And even that rests precariously on Zero's word alone. Testimony alone is not hard proof of anything. You can bring out your whole bullshit sabotage excuse that doesn't make any sense all you want, but at the end of the day, I don't believe him. And that's reflected in my video. The next part of the franchise video is honestly so weak. He presents the argument that Technicals wasn't trying to make excuses for Zero, but that he was merely displaying why certain things in his past may have contributed to his behavior, which I think is complete bullshit personally. John claims throughout his video that Technicals is trying to downplay Zero's actions to make him seem innocent. What Technicals is trying to do is understand the source of why Zero did the things he did. He doesn't think Zero flirted with Katie because he maliciously seeks out vulnerable children. He thinks it's because Zero was a confused 19 year old that didn't know what was and wasn't appropriate to say in conversation to someone who's that young. If you look at Zero's upbringing and the relationships he grew up in and around, this conclusion starts to make some sense. Why does this behavior have to be explained? It's just as deplorable with or without explanation. It makes no difference. The only purpose this serves is to give Zero the best chance of gaining sympathy from the audience. If you preface and follow up serious allegations like this with a load of unrelated fluff about how hard Zero's childhood was, it certainly comes across as an excuse because these actions are the same with or without this section. All it gives the audience is another avenue to excuse his behavior. Do I condone the conversations that took place? No, and I hope I've made that very clear. But come on, let's not beat around the bush here. He did not make this clear, like at all. Didn't make it clear? In the messages we are provided, it's very clear that Zero is being flirtatious, and according to the dates, he knew her age at the time. I'm not going to read them, but these messages on screen are 100% unacceptable, and he'll be the first to tell you that. I literally put this in my video, so I don't know why this is being used as some gotcha moment, but saying one or two times that the conversations were unacceptable is downplaying the severity of the messages in question. Please read them again and come back to me, because they are way, way more than just unacceptable. By rebranding the arguments Tech gives as excuses meant to hold Zero to a different standard than everyone else, he's able to repackage Tech's video in a way that makes it sound completely ludicrous. We saw how he did this with Zero's suicide note, but then there are times where he straight up lies in order to make his points. I'll first play John Swan's retelling, then play the original video to see if you can spot the difference. Tech spends the next six minutes discussing Nairo. This section also serves another purpose and that is to make Zero's case more palatable. Because the Smash community welcomed Nairo back without much reservation, he implies that Zero should also return, because what he did was apparently not as bad. Allegedly, some people think you fucked a kid. What other inspiration would you need to plaster this to every corner of the internet? I'm just saying, if I was a Smash figurehead, which I am, I would just keep someone banned if they don't want to publicly prove they're innocent. This is a gaming community. This is not a behind closed doors legal issue. This is a would parents look at this and approve issue. Fucking idiots, it's not complicated. Well, those two clips certainly paint completely different pictures. The franchise seems to completely miss the point here because I play the clip that I'm referring to just before I start speaking, but he completely leaves it out. This may be a little personal, but I like Zero, and if he decides to continue making content, I can't think of a single reason not to. If you just thought to yourself, wow, that's a pretty risky and controversial opinion, Technicals, then I'd argue that this opinion is 1,000 times less controversial than what a majority of the Smash community already openly accepts. Your head has to be full of rocks if you don't understand what the implication is there. Tex says that he likes Zero and that he believes he should be allowed to create content. And his reasoning is that Zero's case is far tamer than what the Smash community has already accepted. So why not just let Zero back in too? That's clearly the implication. I don't know how the franchise missed it. Here's another clip with the same implication. At least I know for sure what Zero did and didn't do. Can't say the same for Nairo. He then says that I reframed it in a way that makes it sound like Technicals want Zero to be unbanned. Tech would also go on to make a video titled Ban Nairo. It is clear that Tech's argument is that Nairo should be banned as well, yet John reframes this in a way that makes it sound like Tech wants Zero to be unbanned. Let's just use our brains for two seconds. Which seems more likely? A. Tech wants two potential predators back in the community, or B. Tech wants them both banned. I have never made this argument ever. I don't know where he's pulling this from. 
and Tech never made the argument either, hence why I didn't respond to any points about it. In fact, the franchise includes a clip about this in his video. The lack of self-awareness is astonishing. First off, just to clarify, when I say welcome back Zero, I mean welcome back to uploading content, not to Smash events. Despite me never making that argument, I think it's worth clearing up. Why would I respond to a point that technicals never made? Throughout the video, I'm only addressing the hashtag welcome back to Zero movement and stating that I believe Zero should not be allowed to create content for children again. When did I say anything about Smash tournaments? Please link that section to me. I would love to see it. Now we get to the brother argument, which is probably the dumbest argument because it falls apart with even a smidgen of common sense. Now that John has established that Tech is defending and making excuses for Zero, he now tries to go to the root of his motivations. If Tech had to come out and wholeheartedly condemn Zero, he would have had to condemn his brother as well. But he condemned his brother, both privately and publicly. Yeah, dude, he condemned him so hard that he promoted his channel, worked with them on videos, and took him to VidCon, where he networked with some of the biggest creators in commentary. That's a wholehearted condemnation if I've ever seen one. Told him it was stupid, never to do it again, and guess what? He didn't do it again. Hey, it's John from the future here. This isn't even true. If we look back in the screenshots that were provided with the Twitlonger, we can see that the first time BJ did this was the 24th of December, 2016. And then he did it again on February the 18th, 2017. So he did do it again. That's just a complete and utter lie from technicals. Imagine calling someone a liar while lying yourself. Here are the messages Tech showed when he claimed he condemned his brother and told him to stop. Okay, this is just downright dishonest. These messages he's showing on screen were only made public by technicals after the release of my video. How could I talk about them or address them in any way if no one had access to them? And on top of that, even if I did, it actually further implicates technicals. As you can see, they are dated after February 18th. So unless you can show me proof that his brother continued after March 28th, 2017, then technicals is indeed telling the truth. <laughs> this is insane. I can't believe you recorded this, edited it, and thought it was good. Are you telling me that technicals only disavowed his brother one and a half months after the second time where he sent his dick into a chat with minors? He just let him do it the first time, just gave him a pass and didn't say anything. Are you serious? <laughs> that literally makes it so much worse. Tech's brother sent his dick in December and then he sent it in February. That is him doing it again. Where's the lie, mate? The bottom line is that if Technicals condemned his brother, which he did, why would he have trouble condemning Zero? In fact, as proven in the prior section, he did condemn Zero several times throughout the video. Okay, let's play these wholehearted condemnations then. These messages on screen are 100% unacceptable. Do I condone the conversations that took place? No. This may be a little personal, but I like Zero. And if he decides to continue making content, I can't think of a single reason not to. Welcome back, Zero. John asserts that Tech is excusing and downplaying Zero's behavior in an attempt to defend him. He backs up his claims with faulty evidence and repackages Technical's arguments such as his arguments against Nairo. John also claims that Tech didn't condemn his brother's behavior in the group chats despite there being hard evidence to the contrary. John then makes the argument that Tech can't condemn Zero because he would have to condemn his brother as well despite the fact that Tech did both. This line of logic is a fallacy known as presupposing a frame. What John does is he assumes we agreed to his first two points, and if that's the case, then the last point that Tech can't condemn Zero would actually make sense. But if we dig deeper into the root of the issue to find that his assertions are based on broken evidence and lies, we realize that this whole argument collapses. I said in my video that if Tech had to wholeheartedly condemn Zero, he would have to condemn his brother as well. It's important to mention that I said wholeheartedly condemn. Now, I'm no authority on what Technicals does in his home life, and neither are you. His relationship with his brother has nothing to do with his YouTube channel. But as a public figure, wholeheartedly condemning someone isn't just calling something 100% unacceptable and moving on as normal. It means cutting ties, disavowing their behavior completely, and removing that person from your online presence going forward. Technicals did not wholeheartedly condemn Zero or his brother, considering he promoted both heavily and welcomed Zero back into the community. Maybe this is my fault for not making this clear enough in the video, but considering I included clips of technicals quote-unquote condemning his brother and Zero, 
I think it would have been pretty clear to everyone watching that I did not believe those expressions of disapproval to be in any way substantial. The franchise looks at technical statements and thinks that they are enough to satisfy a wholehearted condemnation. I do not. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for people to say that what technicals did was not enough. As a result, my argument does not collapse and presupposing a frame doesn't even apply. Good attempt though. The last part of the franchise's video focuses on character attacks and bringing up old unrelated drama as gotcha moments. He says that I have no integrity and that my video is based on broken evidence. On top of all of this, he even brought up one situation from over a year ago where the person in question has been cool with me for quite some time. In fact, this person has stated on multiple occasions that they no longer wish for the drama to be brought up anymore and that it actually makes them pretty distressed when people talk about it. To use this person as a pawn to try and get a quick gotcha on me is pretty low, especially considering apologies were made ages ago. In fact, I think the franchise should actually take Technical's advice on this one. It's funny too, because what he did to is infinitely worse than whatever Dream did. Oh, the thing he apologized for? That's wild. Apologized? He's shown multiple times that he's not really sorry either. I mean, the person you're actually talking about vouched for John. You're being mad for someone who isn't mad. Mate, why are you mad for someone who isn't mad? <laughs> These desperate attempts to try and assassinate my character is really telling, and it's incredibly bad faith when you're trying to systematically dissect a video of mine. But you know what? Since you went there, how about we talk about the credibility of technicals and the group chat he ran? This is in regards to the twit longer about my brother. Yes, I was in the group chat. In this chat, this group chat that had people from 13 years old to my age, 19 at the time, conversations would often delve into like adult topics and they would share nudes of themselves and lewd pictures uh, amongst themselves and sometimes in the chat that I was in. I was in the group chat. I was in every group chat because I was the leader. 